You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. Now let's talk. Greetings, 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 my visionary dreamers. How is everybody doing on this? Let's talk Sunday. Let's talk Sunday. Let's talk about this situation, this topic. This is ADI, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from the world, saving you from drowning in yourself, saving you from getting in your own way. And this is Chronicles of Living podcast show. And I'm just going to really get right to the topic today. I'm, my day was kind of crazy, and um, I really, really planned on having a whole lot of things mapped out for this show because I think that this topic is such such an important topic for all of us, including myself. Um, love versus forgiveness. Or was it love versus unforgiveness? I hope I didn't mess up the title because I probably put one thing on. I don't know, but I meant to say love versus unforgiveness if I didn't put love versus unforgiveness. Because that's kind of what controls our life. You know, when you really, really think about it, we live by emotions. Whether it is happy, sad, disappointed, depressed, I mean, it's just so many different emotions that we go through in life, even from a from a child, from a baby. You think about it. Think about a baby. Like, you know, the baby comes out and they're pretty much trying to communicate with you, but they don't know. They can't use words. So what do they do? When they're hungry, they cry. When they when they need to be changed, they cry, you know, um, when you make googly faces at them, they laugh. They're happy. So from a ver- from birth, we um, start kind of feeling emotions, and we we communicate through our emotions from birth. You know, and that's that's deep. I mean, I just kind of really thought about that. Like, really, from birth, that's what we learn. I mean, when we become a kid, and you know, you get the whining, like you. I want a popsicle. I want this. I want that. And, and when you don't get your way, then you, you know, the kid might fall out. And if they got a parent that was like, I am, you know, it might get a little hurt from that. But, (laughs) but as you're growing up, you start to learn what love is or your definition of love. Everybody's definition of love is different. And, your definition of love most likely is going to come from your upbringing. You know, the way your mother, your father, or your guardian, whoever raised you, treated you, the affection that you might have gotten from that person, what type of affection and how much affection. All of these things come into play when it comes to a person's definition of love, you know, um, there are a lot of people that might have grew up in a household and that they didn't have any affection. They didn't feel loved. So then when they become adults, they kind of, you know, that all plays out. It plays out on the friends they meet. It plays out on the spouse that they get with. All of that stuff plays out if that person, that individual doesn't look into it for themselves and really find out what is the true meaning of love. You know, the true meaning of love is a person that's just, I, and, and you know what? I'm so mad because I really wanted to actually get the, you know, the dictionary definition of these words because we all define it in our own way. My definition of love is just really caring for someone and really, you know, um, and there, let me say this, there's a difference between love and unconditional love. Cause you got people that can love you 
as long as you're doing for them, as long as you're you're being the way that they want you to be, it's kind of like manipulative. You know, you got that type of love, but then you got the unconditional love that is like not judgmental and, you know, can get past a person's fault and just love a person for who they are, not for what you can get out of that person. But they, they love all of you in, in spite of your flaws and your, your faults. And, you know, that is unconditional love. And unconditional love is very powerful. Not too many people out here these days can have unconditional love for an individual, for a person. And um, that's the sad part about life. Um, when someone do something that's where um that doesn't sit right with us then that's where the unforgiveness comes into play you know and they hurt your feelings in some type of way or you know um they do something drastic like cheat on you if you're in a relationship or you know they really hurt you or they disappoint you in some type of way and It gets to a point where you just feel like, oh, I just can't forgive this person. Um, They might talk about you behind your back and then you find out about it. And then you just like, oh, I'm just I'm done. I don't I can't forgive this person or they jeopardize your your job or just things. It's just so many things um, out here that as you know, human beings, we do to each other that can affect each other in a major way. Just your words alone sometimes. Um, If a person don't have self-love, then they can be um, really badly affected by somebody's words, by somebody's negative words towards them and live with that within them all their lives. And I talked about that before, you know, and then you carry around this unforgiveness And then it just starts affecting you as a person physically, mentally. It breaks you down. People don't understand that diseases really come from unforgiveness. It's not, think about it. The the word disease is really dis-ease, dis-ease. You're not comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So what I've learned through my research, and this is why I'm, I'm kind of mad. <laughs> I'm going to hurt my daughter who is on the phone. <laughs> I kept telling her I need to get off the plane for this dog on show. But, um, you know, we as people, we don't understand that a lot of the disease that we afflict on our bodies, or sometimes it's us. We're the cause of it. You know, you get depressed and that means sometimes you got you might have some unforgiveness in your heart. When you carry unforgiveness in your heart for people, you don't understand what it does to you mentally, physically, emotionally. It really takes a toll on you. I don't care if you think that um, you just, yeah, okay, you just don't got to see that person. You just don't, don't have to talk to that person. But you didn't forgive that person. Like, If y'all listen to my podcast shows, you know, people that's listening and following me, I'm very transparent. And I just started inviting some of my friends and my families, just the last podcast show. And I'm sure that when some of them listen to some of the shows, (laughs) they're going to know I'm talking about. Yeah. But my thing is this. This is where love comes into place because I'm not I'm only talking from my experience. This is my experience that I've had with individuals and how it affected me emotionally. So when I say to you, just like the other day, I think it was, uh, don't be ashamed of your yesterday. And I think I was talking about a situation like Steve Harvey using him as an example and how all these people talking about him with, you know, his ex-wife and how she's coming out saying whatever. I don't know. I didn't follow the story. I'm not into that really, but I've been hearing about it. So what I'm saying is this, obviously within their relationship, there was some, there was not unforgiveness in whichever way they ended, you know, on somebody's part, you get what I'm saying? So therefore now it's coming out when he's doing good and now it's a problem because it wasn't taken care of, you know what I mean? And this is what happens. You know, people carry this certain weight for so many years. And instead of um, 
coming and, and just realizing that, as I always say, we only have control of ourselves. That's it. We can only control us and our actions and, and, and our feelings. We have control over that. We can choose to be happy, sad, depressed, whatever. We don't need drugs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not being disrespectful to, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody that's on um, depression pills or, or anything that's helping them for any type of depression. My thing is, I mean, because you could be depressed for so many different reasons, but my thing is this. You always have a choice. You always have an option in the way you feel. You always have an option in how you choose to deal with how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You can choose to, you feeling bad, you feeling depressed or whatever like that. You can choose to turn on a YouTube video that's real funny to make you laugh until you cry. You have that choice to, to, to do that. To just cut it right as soon as you start feeling some type of way. You know, when I go watch, like last night, I, I was like, oh, you know, I got to work or whatever. And I was, I was like, you know, I feel like watching a movie. And this has, a, I watched this movie called The Circle, which y'all all need to watch because it will show you what uh, the folk is trying to do to us. You really need to watch that movie, The Circle. But um, when I watch movies, when I pick out movies, I pick by emotion. Like, how do I feel today? Do I want to watch a romantic movie? Do I want to watch uh, a you know, a drama or what's the mood, you know, Un unforgiveness, love, all of that. That's all connected to your mood that controls your mood as well. You got people walking around here with all of this baggage of unforgiveness and they're just missing out, missing out on life, missing out on life because they won't take the time to get to the root of the problem. And if they already know the root of the problem on why they don't, uh, why, you know, they felt some type of way when a person did a certain thing to them and why they just can't get over it. Believe it or not, it might be deeper than that situation on why you holding on to unforgiveness. A lot of people couldn't understand how I was able to forgive so many different people in my life that did me, did me dirty. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not sitting up here saying I'm perfect. Oh, I did some stuff. Man, I did some stuff and I did some stuff to some folk. But I'm going to be honest with you. The things that I did to people, I felt like, and this is all a part of unforgiveness. And um, it affected me. The stuff that I might have did that was harmful was because I was hurt. I was in pain. I was, I was disappointed. And so, therefore, I felt like at that time in my life, I felt like I wanted that person to hurt back. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we do. We, we, we hurt. So, hurting people hurt people. That's what they say. You know what I'm saying? And it's so true. If you don't get control of, you know, valuing yourself and learning to love yourself, and not only just learning to love yourself, but learning this, that a lot of times... When people do things to you in a harmful way or they hurt you, it's because they're in pain themselves and they never dealt with their pain. They might be holding and har harboring pain from their youth, from being a child. You know, it's just like um, I could remember um, having a conversation with um, my other son, my, my stepson. It's my, my son's oldest brother, and um, it was years ago when he was young, and I'm like his mom, too. Well, I am his mom. That's my son. That's my other child. And, um, you know, him and his mom, they really didn't have a good relationship. And so he told me, like, I was the closest thing. I was, you know, the, he felt like I was the only one that really cared for him. That's what he felt. But what I told him was this. Maybe your mom didn't know how to be a mom. Maybe because her mom didn't know how to be a mom to her and didn't give her the love and affection that she needed, she didn't know how to give you the love and affection that you needed. So I'm not, while I'm not saying, oh, you know, I'm not dismissing your feelings about this, what I'm saying to you is try to have some compassion and some understanding. Yes, you might be hurting. You might want a certain type of love for you, but... It's a lot of times that people don't know what love looks like. 
because they never had it. They never had it in a way that you want them to give it to you. So how can you expect somebody to love you when half of the time some people don't even love themselves? How can they give you what they can't even give themselves? And that is what I had to learn. That is what helped me to learn how to forgive folk and learn how to release them and just let it go. Yes, there are people that I had to let go of, period, and or just, you know, kind of give a long arm to or whatever in my life. That doesn't mean that I don't have love for them. I have love for them in a certain type of way. I would never want to get a phone call for some of the people that I had to let go that, oh, they're gone. You know, I, I would never want to get that phone call. Now, I don't have no type of, um, like, you know how they say you need to make up with people because you never know what tomorrow they might not be here or whatever. I don't have no type of, um, I don't know, regret or whatever. Like, if somebody was to leave tomorrow that I'm not, you know, friends with or I'm dealing with or whatever like that, I wouldn't feel no type of way. There's, to me, in my heart, there's not any unresolved issues it's just that I came to certain conclusions in my life where it deals with certain people that I might have been friends with or in a relationship with that I felt the need that I need to just stay away from. And that's it. Or I just feel like I need to just not communicate with because of what what happened in the relationship. You know what I'm saying? There are some people that I went through a lot of drama with that I'm, I still can speak to. I still got love for them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why that is, but I think that as individuals, you all need, everybody needs to find their own truth. Everybody needs to find, get to the root of why it is that they're holding on to unforgiveness um, for a certain person. You know, one thing I learned too is this, you know, it's, it's not healthy for you to be trying to pay somebody back that hurt you. That's one, because <laughs> all that does is just, just make more and then you're going back and forth or whatever. I learned that. But also I learned this. It's just so true. You know, what the Bible says is about vengeance is, is God's. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I've learned to just walk away. Like, when somebody do me wrong or make me feel some type of way, I just, I just walk away. I just leave it alone. Like, because I feel like this. I'm going to say something to the person. Definitely, I'm going to confront. I will confront you. That's not a problem. You know, I will confront you, but I'm going to say my piece and I'm going to let you live with that. And then I'm going to give you the chance to come back at me and say your piece. And I, I mean, I would hope to have a healthy communication about it. You know what I mean? Sometimes situations, you know, a lot of people go wrong where they feel in some type of way and they attack the person right there when they're feeling some type of way. One thing I have learned is this. When you feel some type of way and you hurt you need to fall back for a minute, digest it, think about it. You know what I mean? Really think about the person. Try to put your, put yourself in their shoes. See, try to analyze, like, why would they do that? Why would they do that to you? Why would they? You get what I'm saying? You, you need to try to dissect it a little bit before you go right at them. Because a lot of times when you go right, when you in your emotions... Sometimes you say things that you don't mean and then now you can't take it back because now that person heard you say it and even if you meant it out of anger, they're going to remember it. You know what I'm saying? They might forgive you for it, but they're going to remember it. And then now it's going to play back on certain times in their head, what you said, what you did, that whole bit. You know what I'm saying? Until, until the person that did the hurting can come and stand up and, and stand up to the plate and really apologize from their heart and really let that person know just how, you know, I'm not going to say sorry. I don't like to use the word sorry, but just how, you know, how much they feel about them, you know. But a lot of people, that's the thing. A lot of people um, are punks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say it that way. They punks. <laughs> some people are punks and some people don't know how to apologize. I don't, I'm just playing with the punk part. But some people really don't know how to apologize. Some people don't. They just don't. They just don't know how to apologize. You know, especially if they feel 
shame or guilt for what they did once they realize how they hurt that person. Some people don't give a, you know what I mean? Some people do stuff to people and just really just, just that rotten. They just don't care, you know? And then that's where we as individual have to realize that again, we cannot control the other person. We only can control us. We have to engrave that in our mind. We have no control over no one but us. We came out in this world by ourselves and we going to go by ourselves. And this is the reason why I said, you know, in some other podcasts, is you got to live for yourself. You got to be a little selfish sometimes. You know, you got to do what, and I'm not meaning in a disrespectful way. I'm not saying get up and be your family and all of this type of stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you got to just step aside and just say, you know what? What does love look like to me? How, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is love? Sometimes you might need to open up a dictionary, open up a Bible, whatever, whatever type of book you need to relate love to. You need to find out Google love and then look at all the meanings of love written in so many different ways until you get it engraved in your heart. And then you know what really true love is. What is unconditional love? What is being in love versus lust? Being infatuated? All these things are different. You know, people say they in love. See, they say they love a person or whatever like that, but don't know the true meaning. I, I remember talking about that in one of my shows, you know, many times. Not many times. Let me stop. I'm not going to say that. Um, it's been a time when I thought I was in love. And, you know, I might have been in love for a moment in time, but love is not dysfunctional. It's not dysfunctional. That's not how love looks. Love is people coming together, rather be a mother and daughter, mother and son, father and son, whatever, and having respect for one another, having respect for one another, having each other's back, you know, being there in a time of need, but respecting each other's boundaries at the same time, not abusing the love, not manipulating the love. You know, just to get what you want out of it, but being respectful of each other. You know what I'm saying? So we have to get to that point where you understand that. And then you will see your relationship start to grow and start to become closer. Don't keep throwing something that somebody did in their face. I've had, I've had relationship. I had a relationship like that where a person kept throwing something in my face and it's like, you know what I mean? How can a person heal? How can you have a healthy relationship when you keep remembering past stuff? That's not healthy. That's not love. You know what I'm saying? That's really kind of being manipulative and holding a person in bondage, you know? And so many people miss out on divine connections because they want to control the other person and through through that type of I say mechanism or whatever you want to say it I just came out of a a, a week of um, dealing with herbs and all this stuff but um, you know sometimes people want to control people that way and they want to make them feel bad some some people control, Another person, I don't, and when I talk about this, I'm not talking about just a relationship with a spouse. I'm talking about family as well. There are plenty of families that, you know, go through life and then all of a sudden this person don't want to do something that they want them to do. Now they mad at them or they didn't show up at this event. Now they mad at them and now they not speaking. And now a year go past, three years go past and then something happened tragic now that's the only thing that bring the person together the people together that's not healthy that's not good that's not good we only got one life to live y'all and the thing is this when you don't tell people and remind people just how much they mean to you you never know how you can't just assume that you can't assume you can't assume that just because that's your mom, she knows that you love her, or just because that's your your son or your daughter or whatever, your cousin or whatever, that they know, oh, they know I love them. 
A lot of people say that. They know I love them. But have you ever, ever actually told them that? I tell my son, my kids, my daughter, I tell them every time I'm on the phone talk, I love you. I text them, I love you. In the midst of sometimes, um, just throughout my day, I could text them sometimes and thinking about you, love you, don't want nothing, you know, just love you. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. A lot of people can't even say those words out of their mouths. Something as simple as a hug. A hug. There's a lot of people I turned out on hugging. <laughs> it's amazing to me how many people I've met in my life, and because I'm a hugger, and that's the first thing I do, I go in for the hug, you know, and there's a lot of people that it's like, oh, no, mm-mm, no, I don't want to, no. But a lot of those people that try to keep you that don't want the hug, they really need a hug. <laughs> Really need a hug. I think we should have a national hug day. <laughs> really. Because it's times that I hug people and they hold me. And this is regular people. But when I go to hug them, they hold me so tight. And I I get that they feel like, oh, wow, I really needed this. You know? It's amazing what you can feel from a person's energy when you give them a hug. And how, you know, the things that they're missing in life. Just, I, I was listening to, um, what was it, Dorothy Cannon, the, one of the people I listen to, one of the people I read her books and stuff, and she is really deep, and she was talking about that and how different um, emotions affect different parts of your body. So when you're sad or when you're depressed, it might affect your kidneys or it might affect, you know what I mean, That's or diabetes, whatever. But she was breaking it down, and that's where I really wanted to write that stuff down. Um, I guess I'm going to have to have another podcast show to kind of maybe something on dis-ease, not disease, but dis-ease and where it comes from. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to do a show on that so that I could break down and let y'all see, like, you know, you get these aches, you get these pains, and, you know, when you get these aches and these pains, think about who it is that you are harboring unforgiveness for. And I'm not saying that you got to call that person up and say, you know what, I forgive you. No, you you can say it out loud. You can say, you know what, you know what, Bill, I forgive you. You can, you can write it out somewhere. I forgive you, Bill, for the dirty stuff you did to me for you know what I mean stealing my wife or whatever whatever Bill did y'all know I just pick a name out the hat (laughs) poor Bill but you know you can release that from your heart and that's what I've learned to do I've I've released everybody from my heart that's ever hurt me in any type of way disappointed me caused me any type of pain I, and I've had some stuff done to me, I'm telling you. But like I said, I'm not perfect. I did some dirt too, you know what I mean? And I can own that. I, I did some stuff too. But one thing about me is I've always came back and apologized to the person. Once I realized like, wow, or if the person brought to my attention that I disappointed them or hurt them or whatever, if they, I was open, I, I've always been like an open person for you to talk to and tell me like, yo, you know what I mean? When you did this or when you said this, that kind of hurt my feelings or whatever, I'll own it. I'll take that and be like, you know what? My bad. I'm sorry. I didn't know or whatever. Give you a nice tight hug. Let's let it go. It's done. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring this shit up. No, oops, excuse me. This is supposed to be PG, but don't bring it back up again. You know what I'm saying? Let it go. Let's grow from that. You know? It's like one thing I know for sure, and like I said, you don't have to worry about getting somebody back for what they did to you. Because trust me, karma is a mother. Everybody, and I can say this, everybody that I felt, hurt me in an unjustly way has paid for it and I've heard about it in some type of way and I've never wished no bad on nobody I just just leave it and just like wow okay I could remember I talked about one of my podcasts is the um one of the chicks I was working with um when I was managing a property one time and how she was forging my name on stuff and then I found out and called a meeting with corporate and because she was there before me and she had a relationship with 
the um, regional manager, she got me fired. And um, and it was in the midst of me just getting getting into a, a house, leaving the apartment, getting in the house. I mean, literally within two days. Um, and I had my son, and I'm like, how can she be that heartless? And she had two kids herself, and I did nothing but treat her kids right, treat her right. And I'm like, you know, she was running around sleeping with everybody in the apartment complex, So, and she was younger than me. That's no excuse. But... What that did for me was it let me see that, and I told her this when I was leaving. When I told her, I said, you know, I, I feel bad for you. I hope that one day you find out who you really are and you, you know what I'm saying? I, and she was shook. She was shook because she wasn't expecting for me to say something to her, you know, in a heartfelt way. But I did. I felt bad. I didn't feel really, I felt bad for her, but I felt worse for her kids because, you know, her kids were suffering because of her actions. And so I understood that she didn't have love for herself. So the things that she was doing and giving bad reports to people for them to, so they couldn't get another apartment and then using my name so so they wouldn't come step to her. <laughs> you know, that was all done because she didn't feel love in her life. She was married and everything, but she was sleeping with everybody in an apartment complex and she told me, like, her family, she was an outcast. So what I'm saying is you got to get to the root of the problem. And then what happened was she got me fired and turned around. Maybe within a six-month span, three to six-month span, they fired her. And then they come looking for me to take her position and try to offer me more money. So this is what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to pay nobody back because God, God sees everything. He sees everything. He knows your heart. He knows that you just mean, meant well by somebody if that's what you meant. If you meant well by somebody, if you were giving your all in a relationship and you really cared for the person, you really had that person back or whatever, God sees it all. And that person at some point in their life are going to feel it. They're going to feel it. You know, once they come to themselves, once they get a conscious or whatever like that, they're going to feel the pain that you felt. Somebody else is going to make them feel the way they made you feel. It may be worse. Trust me. It's just karma. It's all going to come back. So you don't have to. And that's not me saying, oh, people get what they, you know. But what I'm saying is this is why I work hard at trying to walk in my integrity and, and treating people right, even when they do me dirty. You know what I'm saying? I try my best to look at their situation, look at them as a person, look at them as a being and and try to fit myself in their shoes and look at their life through their eyes so that I won't hold on to unforgiveness. This is what I do. And people don't understand how is it that I still stay connected to certain people that um that did did me dirty you know what I mean like I was talking about some of the people that I was in the business with or whatever and how you know they did some shady stuff but I talked about it and I said like look I got love for these people we we talked about it you know what I'm saying and I got love for them it's, it's a learning experience it's you know some people don't understand what they're doing sometimes you really do got to pull people coattails and say yo this ain't cool <laughs> I know one of my girlfriends, she, um, I'm such a pusher. I'm such a, you know, potential pusher, dream pusher and all of that, that I just want everybody to do good. I want, I see the potential in people and I get hyped and I'll be like, yo, all you got to do is this. All you got to do is that. And she was in the midst of, I think I might've talked on this before. I don't know, but I'll say it to this show. Um, she was in the midst of moving and everything like that. And I was telling her what she, all she needed to do was this because I know how to move. God gave me that gift to just find a place and just move and just work it out. So sometimes I used to get think that, okay, it's easy for me. So I don't understand why it's so hard for other people. Why they can't just move when they want to move? What, what's up? What's the problem? Why you can't move tomorrow if that's what you want to do? Because <laughs> that's what I know how to do. But she called me and she, you know, told me, it's like, listen, I almost had to uh, befriend you. <laughs> 
without the Facebook <laughs> because it was just too much pressure you was putting on me and I'm you was just overwhelming me and this and any other and she talked to another friend and another friend was like oh no you know stay friends or whatever like that and it's kind of sound a little high schoolish but I mean this is a true story I mean we was grown this is some years ago maybe like I don't know maybe four years ago or something and she talked to me and she told me and I was like you know what I apologize I apologize. I didn't know that I was having that effect on you. I, I do get carried away because I'm a mover and a shaker and I just, I got such big ambition and I just go. When I get something in my head, I just go. So she made me realize and see that everybody not built like that. And that's nothing wrong with it. It's not that I'm better than or nothing like that. Everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own walk and their own way of doing things, their own timing in doing things. And so when she said that to me, I just, you know, I apologized to her and I was like, yo, I love you. You know what I'm saying? You, you my, you my girl. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just let me know from here on out. I was like, let me know from here on out. If you feel like I'm overwhelming you, you feel like I'm putting too much on you at one time or whatever like that. Um, then just let me know because I won't know until you tell me. So this is what I'm saying about people assume people know women, men, whatever they're in a relationship and they just assume like, oh, if a person is, um, all right, I'm going to draw out another scenario. Say, say you, you in a relationship, like I'm not an argumental person. I'm just real easy going, real laid back. Any within any relationship I've ever been in, that's just who I am. And I do say that that is probably, I'm, in a way, it probably caused a problem on some of my relationship, but in a way, not because I'm so easygoing. I'm not really a complainer. I'm not really a nagger. You know, I I was in a relationship one time, and then the person just always got to go out with their boys. Always got like, yo, can I get some? Can we go out? Can we? You know, what's up with that? Like, you know what I'm saying? So because I wouldn't really say much about it, okay, they thought it was cool, and then after a while, you know. I get tired. It's like, well, look, what's my purpose? Like, I might as well just keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Your boys is more important. So what? what is the point? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'd rather be with your boys on this time, on this important event or whatever like that, than be with me. So what's the point? You know what I mean? When I probably could have just said, yo, this is, this is like becoming a problem. We, can we pick a day that you just be with your boys or your friends or whatever like that? But I got to, I had to understand like everybody don't grow at the same rate. You know, sometimes people feel like that's their comfort zone, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. But my thing is this. When you meet a person, a lot of people meet people. And just like Maya Angelou said, Believe a person when they show you the first time. And ever since I heard that and read that from one of her books, that's how I live my life. I believe a person when they show me the first time. Because a lot of times we get in relationships with somebody, we see something. We got, we got a little, you know, we, we, we get the warning. We get the warning. Like my son's father, I got the warning. I did a couple times. And, and like I said, I try not to go there, but you know, Call myself, you know, doing it for my son or whatever like that. But it played out. It played itself out. The warning played itself out in real time. <laughs> so when a person show you who they are and then you get into this relationship with them and then now you're unhappy, but they already showed you who they was. They already did something that made you kind of second guess. Like, hmm. But then you going off, oh, wait a minute, this is... It's potential here, and this can work, and I can change them, or I could change her, or you know what I'm saying? Some people, that's how they think. I I was a potential person, and most of the guys I dated, I'm still cool with them, but a lot of times I, I saw signs, you know what I mean? And I just was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just going to be accepting of that. I'm just whatever. But no, you got you to gotta go with and this is with family, friends, relationships, whatever. You got to go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. You got to. Because when you're in a relationship, even with family, 
and you come around and you you got this feeling in your heart, you know what? They don't really want me here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they just tolerating me because I'm family. They're just tolerating me because I've been a long time friend. They're just tolerating me because we've been in this relationship for 10 years. Why would you do that to yourself? Why? Kick rocks, yo. You know what I mean? Keep it moving. Like just, I mean, right now where I'm at, this is the first place, the first place. And I'm 47 years old. This is the first place I feel appreciated. I feel I feel the love. And yes, I got a family that loves me. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is people, community, everybody is genuine. I can feel their spirit. I can feel that that they love me for me, not what I got on, not how I look, not none of that. They love me for me. They appreciate me for what I do, you know what I mean, for this for this institute. They let me know that all the time. All the time they let me know like Yo, we so glad to have you here, you know, that you chose to come here. And it's, you know how good that feels, especially when you have worked in so many different places and you've been friends with people, you've done stuff with people, you you know, and they never gave you the appreciation and they never showed you or told you that they appreciated you. I make it a point when I'm dealing with my clients, when I'm dealing with the people that I'm working with. I make it a point when I email them, I say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. That is my thing. I tell people that, oh, I appreciate you. That's my thing. Because, or I'm proud of you. Because you, you'd be amazed at how many people go through life and never hear those words. Never hear, I'm proud of you. Never hear, I appreciate you. Never hear, I love you. Never get a hug. It's amazing, but it's true. It's real. So, you know, I know I probably didn't even talk about some of the stuff I did, but I just let this one flow and I hope that you guys, you know, got something out of this show and I, I, I just thank you for the support. I thank you for the love y'all showing me. I thank you for the emails, inbox. I just thank you for all of that. I appreciate you all. I really do. And I'm proud of y'all for listening and trying to learn who you are. I'm proud of you if if you're one of those people that's decided to take that walk and really dig deep into yourself and figure out who you really are, why you're really here, and to live out your purpose in life and give up yourself in the right way. Not in a way of being used or not in a way of being abused, but in the right way, in the way that God intended for you to give of yourself to this time, space, reality, to people, the world. And, you know, I'm proud of you for taking the first steps. And as I always say, don't overwhelm yourself one step at a time, one day at a time. You know, just write down in your books the things that you can do to move towards your dreams, your visions. And the first thing, and y'all know, I, these topics that I talk about, I, I talk about them because you got to be good with you first before you can be successful. You can be successful. You, your dream can become a reality. But guess what? You will not be happy because you'll still have some unfinished business within yourself. You got to get to the root of who you are first. Learn to value you first. Learn to love yourself first. And then watch the world embrace you just as you love yourself. And so with all that being said, this is A. Dion. This is Chronicles of Living podcast show. And I am your dream pusher. I'm your lifeguard. I'm saving you from the world. And I am. I'm claiming that, that I'm saving you from the world. I'm saving you from yourself. I'm saving you from drowning in just words and just unforgiveness. Start forgiving folk. Start forgiving folk. You don't have to forget what they did. But you need to forgive what they did because it's for you. It's not for them. It's for your health. That is what's going to help you. Don't go around here with bitterness, with unforgiveness in your heart. It's really not healthy, y'all. I want everybody to be well. I want everybody to be happy. Work through it one day at a time. I love you guys. Peace. Thank you for listening to Chronicles of Living, where we talk to everyday people 
about everyday things in the past, present, and future. And if you are pursuing your dreams, I'm proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. To keep up with us, please visit chroniclesofliving.com. Until next time, this is Adion, your dream pusher. I love you guys.